everyone has a different type of back pain. So there's not going to be one back pain practice that fits all. However, this back pain practice is going to be focused on those who have an anterior pelvic tilt, such as myself. Real quick, I've got to apologize for the audio quality in this video. I'm dubbing over it right now as we speak. It was just really echoey in that room and wasn't going to cut it. What is going to cut it, though, is this affiliate program that I signed up with, Squarespace. They're a website company. Now, whether you're an acupuncturist, a teacher, a yoga teacher, your resume these days is your website. And Squarespace makes it super, super easy to build a website, to get a domain, to take care of all of the back-end issues so that your website looks crisp. It's what I've been using for years now to create my website, and I think it's quite on point. If you click the link below, it will be an affiliate link, so it's really helpful for me. It helps me produce more videos for you, and maybe even get a better mic so that we can have better audio for these videos. But let's dive into getting rid of back pain. We're gonna start about midway towards the back of the mat. I want your feet to be about as wide as the mat. So the heels are at the edges of the mat and your toes are turned in. We're gonna start with an internal rotation on the legs and I want you to come forward, folding all the way down. You can bring the hands down towards the floor. I wanna keep the weight in the toes. Keep your quadriceps active tipping the weight forward towards the toes. Keep this internal rotation into the legs. Keep the weight in the toes. Keep your quadriceps active. The kneecaps stay lifted for this entire time. You can keep the weight into the hands. Maybe you can hang and you can hold on to opposite elbows, but I need the weight forward in towards the toes. At all times, keep your quadriceps active. Do not let them slip. Do not let the kneecaps lower. Staying active here. This is very, very strong. If you need to shift from side to side, that's okay. You can shift from the right leg towards the left leg, shifting the weight. If it's too much, you can walk the hands out a little bit further but I need your quadriceps active. Keep the weight moving forward towards the toes. Keep this internal rotation on the legs going. So internal rotation allows you to access the medial part of the hamstring. It also should feel widening across the lower back. Keep the weight shifting forward towards the toes. Don't bring the weight towards the heels. I need the weight in the toes. If you're holding the elbows and it's keeping the weight towards the heels, bring the hands back down towards the floor. Keep the weight moving towards the toes. This posture is very, very active. No resting here. Don't let those kneecaps slip down. I'm looking right at you. Keep those quadriceps active. Okay, now bend the knees and turn the heels in towards each other. So now the toes are facing out. This comes into an external rotation and you can sink the hips down towards the floor. You may have to lift the heels off of the ground if your Achilles tendon is too tight, but ideally I'd love it if you can get your feet flat towards the floor, sinking the hips down towards the floor. And you're going to reach the arms out in front as you focus on reaching the lumbar spine out behind you. So your lumbar spine is reaching away and your hands are reaching forward. Keep pulling the stomach in here, trying to press the low back out and reaching the arms forward. A 
Okay, now we're going to start moving with the breath. So keep the chest attached to the thighs. So don't let them come up. Have the arms reaching forward. And we're going to lift the hips up slowly, keeping the chest attached towards the thighs. You don't come up all the way. And exhale, lower back down. So we're going to move with the breath, inhaling, lifting the hips up, and exhaling, sitting back down. Don't let the chest move away from the thighs. The legs are externally rotated. We're pivoting up and down here. You're finding your center of gravity. You're pulling the stomach in. Chest stays glued to the thighs, and we're only moving up and down. Inhale, lifting the hips up, and exhale, lowering back down. Move with the breath. You can move as fast or as slow as you want, going at your pace. Keep the chest connected to the thighs. The legs do not straighten all the way. The knees stay bent the entire time. We're just moving up and down. Inhale, coming up with the hips. And exhale, lowering back down. So you should feel your quadriceps burning. This is a good sign. This means that you're working. And this will be our last time. You can exhale down. Coming up with the hips, with the inhale, and exhaling down. Awesome. Okay, now come onto the knees. You can have the toes pointing back behind you, sitting onto the heels. If that's too much for you, you can tuck the toes under and sit onto the heels. If that's even too much, grab a block, sit on a block. Eventually, you sit. You can sit with your hips in between the heels. And here, what I want you to do is tuck the tailbone down towards the floor. So whether or not you're sitting on blocks or sitting on the heels, you're going to pull the stomach in and then try to tuck the tailbone down. So the tailbone is reaching underneath you. This is more of a posterior pelvic tilt here. And keeping this, pull the stomach pulled in, and then you start to take over towards the twist. So we're going to twist over towards the right side first. So you bring your left arm over, keeping the stomach pulled in. Maybe the hand only gets to the knee. That's as far as you get. That's awesome. Eventually, you can get the elbow down towards the knee, but that's an eventuality. What I want you to focus more on is pulling the stomach in keeping the tailbone tucked down. This keeps and protects your lumbar spine and it keeps everything moving into the thoracic spine. As you exhale, you can deepen the twist a little bit more, but we're staying here. Keep the stomach pulled in. Don't let it slip out. Keep the tailbone tucking down. Okay, we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Keep the tailbone tucked down. Pull the stomach in. And now we can start the twist. So we take the right arm across towards the knee. Maybe this is as far as we get. That's fine. Eventually... You can bring the elbow over and across towards the knee, but more important is that you pull the stomach in. Protect the lumbar spine here at all cost. Get the twist to move higher up into the thoracic vertebrae. Keep the stomach pulling in. Keep twisting a little bit deeper. Every exhale, you may be able to pull the shoulder blade back in towards the spine, deepening the twist. But hanging out here. But don't soften. 
keep your stomach pulled in. This is active. All of these stretches are active stretches. Okay, now, now your knees are probably sore, so stretch the legs. We're going to come onto the hands. Straighten the legs out back behind you. We're coming to the top of a plank position here. I want you to tuck the tailbone down and then round through the chest. So spread the scapula apart, lift up through the chest. This is a deep rounding of the upper back. Keep the tailbone tucked down. Pull the stomach in once again. Keep pulling in the stomach. Keep trying to hollow out through the chest, lifting up through. Press the scapula away from each other. Keep the tailbone tucking down. Long lower back here. Cool, okay. We're gonna lower down to the knees briefly and we're coming into a lunge. So step the left foot forward, keep the right leg back, tuck the toes under, keep the right glute active. So really tuck the tailbone down here, strong butt muscle. Start to gently move forward into the left knee, but focus on this back leg here. Focus on the right leg as you shift forward. Tailbone stays tucked down, really, really strong glute muscle. We're talking like buns of steel here, boot glute muscle. So it may be a lot and you can back off of it just a little bit, take a breath, tuck the tailbone back down and start to move forward once again into the left knee. The idea is that you're not giving up on this glute muscle in the back. You should feel a stretch, gentle stretch through the hip flexors. Might not be so gentle, it might be kind of uncomfortable. That's okay too. We're moving forward into the left knee. Keep squeezing that right glute muscle in. Keep the tailbone tucking down. Okay, let's switch sides. So lower the left knee back, come forward with the right knee. Again, we're tucking the tailbone down, tucking the back toes under. This is buns of steel here, guys. So keep the tailbone tucked down and then start to move forward into the right knee, but keep the tailbone tucked down. You can pull the stomach back in here. The weight is slowly shifting forward, but again, that left glute muscle is active. Tuck the tailbone down. If it's too much, you back out, take a breath, and then we're going to move back into it. Shift the weight forward towards the right knee. Keep tucking the tailbone down, active left glute muscle. Pulling the stomach in. Keep the tailbone tucking down. Okay. Back. As you practice for low back pain, moving through those few movements, trying to do that at least three times a day or three days a week should start helping to relieve some of the tension that's tight in your low back. Do these movements to the best of your ability. And again, this is for people with more of an anterior pelvic tilt. There's no one back pain practice that fits everybody. This is one that fits a particular type of back pain. No mistakes. 